Good morning and welcome to News Watch Today. I'm Cameron Lee. And I'm Austin Mickey. Evangel students gather in chapel as Spiritual Emphasis Week is underway. And the popularity of Stanley Cups is being questioned. Aubrey Jackson is here with your forecast and Titus Smith has your latest sports news. This is News Watch Today. Thanks for joining us this morning. Right now we have our weather anchor to give us a first look at the weather. Good morning. Welcome back to Weather Watch. Let's take a look at this week's weather. We can see the current conditions are sunny and 37, so pretty nice outside, especially for a uh, winter morning. We can see the humidity has risen to 91%, but um, it's staying pretty even, so you can see it'll stay about the same throughout the week, and winds are relatively low, around eight miles an hour, moving south to southeast. And today we can see our high is around 66, and the humidity is going to stay about the same. So be prepared for a nice day, and uh, maybe go outside and enjoy some of that warmer weather that we have this winter. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. I am kind of excited about having some warmer weather. I know there might be some colder weather coming later, but I'm excited for the warm weather now. Yes, I'm also very excited because, I mean, soccer practices won't be too cold. There you go. And it'll be perfect. I guess we'll know more in just a little while during Aubrey's full forecast. On Wednesday... Walmart, America's largest retail giant, announced their plans to build 150 new stores in the next five years. The corporations previously announced in 2016 that they would be decreasing store openings in order to invest more into the online efforts. In addition to constructing the new stores, Walmart plans on remodeling 650 stores across the United States and Puerto Rico. The first stores will be opening this spring in Atlanta and Santa Rosa Beach. According to John Ferner, the president and CEO of Walmart's U.S. division, by upgrading store layouts, product selection, and innovative technology, Walmart aims to make shopping easier and more convenient for customers. They come in a rainbow of colors and keep up to 40 ounces of liquid cold all lug fitting in the car cup holder. There's no question Stanley and other brands of travel tumblers are the it thing to have right now, but they're also grabbing the attention for another reason, the fear that they contain lead. Consumers have waited in long lines to snag one. One woman was even accused of stealing $2,500 worth of them, but now they're being tossed out with last night's dinner. A spokesperson for Stanley acknowledged that the material used to seal the vacuum insulation at the base of the cup does contain some lead, but says once sealed, this area is covered with a durable stainless steel layer, making it inaccessible to consumers. While lead exposure is dangerous, especially to young children and those who are pregnant, Dr. Denise Milestone with Mayo Clinic says she doesn't think it's necessary to ditch your cups. And in a statement, the Stanley Company says, it's rare for the base of the cup to come off, exposing the seal. But if that does happen, Stanley says the cup is eligible for replacement under the lifetime warranty. According to the Center for Disease Control, over the past few weeks, measures of respiratory virus cases have been going down. However, they remain high across the rest of the U.S. RSV hospitalization rates are quickly dropping off in children, yet stay consistent amongst older adults. Doctor visits due to respiratory illnesses are down from 7% three weeks ago to 4% as of January 20th. Despite these reports, the CDC is still on the lookout for a post-holiday surge of RSV activity. On February 2nd, from 7 to 9 p.m., Evangel University will be putting on a special event for all students with a creative side. February Epiphany gives students the opportunity to present their very own artwork, written songs, writing, and any other forms of original work. This event will take place on the Evangel campus at their coffee house, The Barracks. All students are encouraged to show off their skills or simply come and enjoy all the talent that will be showcased. Up next, a new event celebrating Spiritual Emphasis Week is coming to Evangel. And we'll have a special guest come to talk more about the Evangel's Spiritual Emphasis Week. We'll hear more about that when we get back from this break.
you're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seats for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. For all the late night eaters out there, Evangel is hosting a late night at the Joust on February 2nd from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Students will have the option of purchasing some delicious menu items from the Joust on the Evangel campus. The menu will be featuring Pastor Mark's homemade smash burgers, famous french fries, and classic milkshakes. Meal prices will range from $8 to $10 and can be purchased with cash, card, bonus bucks, or Valor dollars. Cameron Lee is standing by with a special guest to speak more about Spiritual Emphasis Week. Cameron? Thank you. Today we have Bernardo Gatica, one of the discipleship administrators at Evangel University with us. Thanks for being here, Bernardo. Yeah, of course. Thank you so, we're so excited much for having that, me. Yeah, we're excited that you're here. Um, so kind of tell us what Spiritual Emphasis Week is and why Evangel has it. Yeah, so Spiritual Emphasis Week is pretty much a time for students to emphasize on the spirituality of this campus. I know with being a fine arts university, we put so much emphasis on the education of students, and mm. that's super important. But I think what I think is also super important is to also um, have students dial in on the spiritual side of Evangel. And so this week is really just a time for students to come together and um, to, to launch the semester having this time with God to help them prepare for the, re for the remaining time that they have here at Evangel. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So being a discipleship administrator, that means you are a student here, but you're also kind of in a leadership role within your building that you live in. Um, so you're getting to see firsthand what the spiritual side and how it's affecting the students. So what do you think is your favorite thing that you've been noticing and the effect that it's having on the students here? Yeah, so, I mean, as a student, I love being there. I love being in the crowd. I love the worship. I love the word. I love the prayer. All of it as a student is super impactful and meaningful to me. And as a leader, it's been so amazing being able to hear from other leaders on campus how people in their dorm are being influenced, how people on their floors are growing, how just the community overall is coming together um, outside of spiritual emphasis. Mm -hmm. You know, once the doors are closed and everyone leaves, the community is, is together again. And, and there's more life in the dorms because of this time that we've had in Spiritual Emphasis Week. Um, I get together with a lot of leaders throughout the week. It's yeah. something I do. I have so many meetings and I get to talk with so many amazing people about how this person on their floor, you know, had an encounter with God for the first time wow. or how this person, you know, came to terms with some things that happened, you know, years ago. And it's all because of this time that we have, which is Spiritual Emphasis Week. Yeah, and because you're also a student, could you talk a little bit about what you think God has done for you so far this week? Man, so I've had, personally, and I'm not trying to go like too crazy into my personal life, but I have been seeing some new opportunities come up, you know, in, in the near future. And I've been really going back and forth of like, man, do I do this? Do I do that? I don't know what to do in this time. And Spiritual Emphasis Week, man, like one of those nights, I was just praying, and God just really put in my mind, like, this is what you're going to do. Like, do this with a, a surrendered heart. And so not only do I have just that moment with God and be able to communicate with God, but God has been there actively answering my prayers. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I know it's only Thursday, so we have a couple more days coming up in the week um, where we can see Spiritual Emphasis Week take off. What else can we expect to see throughout the week? Yeah, so what's so amazing about Spiritual Emphasis Week this semester is that it was actually launched off with the help of Crosswalk. Um, so Monday and Tuesday, well, Monday, we had Catalyst lead worship. It was a worship night, and they did so amazing. And then Tuesday night was led by crosswalk leaders and an impact team called Pursuit. Um, but for the remainder of the Spiritual Emphasis Week, we have Mike Rakes, who's kind of taking the lead for the remainder. And um, he's going to be having some help with Heart Song and some guest speakers coming in mm -hmm. um, for Thursday night today. And... Um, Friday, Friday Chapel, he'll be having some guest speakers, I think, pretty sure. Um, but also, what is super new and exciting is that Pastor Mark had decided to have this fun event at the very end of Spiritual mm -hmm. Emphasis, which is the late night at the Joust, where we get to try his new, not new, but his famous smash burger and so i personally am very excited for that i will be in attendance for the smash burgers oh, yeah. i'm just as excited you know um going into spiritual emphasis week this week evangel's kind of wrapping up their 21 days of eu praise for you mm -hmm. and it's kind of merged in i know i went to a couple services and they have some like prayer requests laying out can we expect to see those prayer requests for the rest of this week or as eu wraps up the pray for you is it kind of just going to merge into spiritual emphasis week yeah so that was super awesome that they did that. Yeah. Just the EU praise for you, and then at the beginning of Spiritual Emphasis Week, kind of combining it, just because there were some overlaying days. Um, but last night was actually the last night of EU praise for you. And so last night was the last time that we were able to see those requests and pray mm -hmm. over them. The remainder of this week, again, is, is being now led from or by uh, Mike Rakes. And so those requests are no longer going to be a part of the yeah. night, but you know I'm sure there's still people praying over them and people who are getting in communication with those requests, the people who sent them in and giving them the feedback of how um, their requests were handled. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Bernardo. It's great to hear more about Spiritual Emphasis Week and all that it has in store for the students coming up. Let's go back to the desk with Austin and Aubrey. Thanks, Cameron. So, Aubrey, what's the weather looking like for the rest of the week? Well, we can see it is going to get a little bit warmer than what we've been expecting, but we'll dive more into that during my full forecast. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river <laughs> I am blind but I need not see What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me If I'm really free Take me down to the river and You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the... What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. 
Make an emergency plan today. One of history's great mysteries may have a new development, as experts say an image captured on the ocean floor could be linked to Amelia Earhart's fateful final flight. A group of deep sea explorers say a sonar image captured in the middle of the Pacific Ocean may reveal Amelia Earhart's long lost final flight. Using cutting edge sonar imaging tech, the South Carolina based deep sea vision team scanned more than 5,000 square miles of the ocean floor before capturing an image showing a form of an old aircraft more than 16,000 feet underwater that matches the size and features of the Lockheed 10E Electra Earhart was piloting when she went missing nearly 87 years ago. At this point, the findings are still speculative, but have already attracted the attention of prominent aviation experts, including the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, which says the intriguing findings warrant a return expedition. The deep sea vision team hopes more information could help them bring closure to one of America's history's greatest mysteries. It almost makes you wonder if it really could be her flight. You know, I think it's really possible. Technology has advanced so much, and she is really famous, so. Who I knew it was going to take 87 years to find her? Only 87. Kind of makes you wonder if weather kind of took it to effect um, of the accident. Maybe there was some bad weather in the area. Speaking of weather, Aubrey, what can you tell us is coming up this week? So I can tell you a lot about this week, Cameron, starting with our current conditions outside that we talked about earlier. It's sunny and 37 with a humidity of 91%. So we can see it is actually uh, very nice outside for a nice uh, cool winter morning. So be sure to go outside before the weather gets any colder uh, because we can see today is going to be uh, mostly cloudy with the high of 66. So um, nice and warm, especially considering some of those freezing temperatures we've had in these last few weeks. We can see for today's almanac, today's temperature is a low of 43 and a high of 66, which is almost 20 degrees higher on both ends um, than average. So we can see um, it's hotter than normal, so go outside while you still can because it might uh, just end up getting colder. We can also see our record temperatures um, are vastly different, spanning from negative 14 to 84 degrees. So um, it's a good thing we're not on either one of those ends, but uh, keep an eye out for the weather to see where we are moving later this week. We can also see the lower precipitation um, as today is February 1st. We've only had 0.07% of precipitation, but we're looking um, to see a rise in that later this week. For a satellite, you can see some of that weather I was talking about coming up here and moving, um, moving to the east. So we can see possibly some weather coming in in southern Missouri. Um, we do have a cold front moving down here, so that might bring some precipitation. But stay tuned for that, and we will keep on the lookout. Now, let's take a look at our radar. For our radar, we can see that same cold front that I was talking about coming in from the west, moving this way. And we can see that Missouri is not quite hit yet with any type of precipitation or colder weather, but it is moving closer towards Oklahoma and Kansas. So there is a small possibility that it will move closer towards our Springfield area. For our high Missouri temperatures today, we can see it definitely has been warmer than what we've seen in these last few weeks. These last few weeks where we've experienced freezing weathers and icy roads, we now see temperatures in the 60s. We can see Springfield is a high of 66 today with surrounding cities 68, another 66, and Columbia being 62. So go enjoy that weather before it gets any colder. We can also see that cold, um, front coming in on our national forecast. We can see it coming from the north closer to Missouri and some precipitation coming into northern Missouri. So for the question as whether that hits our uh, southern Missouri area in Springfield, we're still undetermined, but seeing as how it is moving down further south, we can prepare for some precipitation later on this week. We can also see some mixed precipitation in other parts of the country, so perhaps that will move closer towards us, but for now, we're going to stick in the 60s. For our six day forecast, you can see some of that 60 degree weather that we've been talking about as well as that precipitation that's coming in. Tomorrow we can expect a high of 65 and it is going to get slightly colder throughout the weekend. So you can expect a low 
on Monday of around 31. So be prepared for slightly below freezing weather. But other than that, we can see it does slightly rise into later next week. So with that decline, we also get an incline. So it is evening out there throughout the week. That's it for Weather Watch this week. I'm Aubrey Jackson. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. You know, I'm excited about the warm weather she talked about. I know it's supposed to still be winter and we should still see some snow, but I love the warmth, so I'm excited for it. I know. I'm kind of on the opposite side. I love <laughs> when it's cold and I can just stay indoors in my PJs. Just around the corner, Titus Smith will be here to give us the latest in sports. This and more when we return. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seats for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. As Super Bowl 58 draws near, there is one question burning in the back of almost everyone's mind. Will Taylor Swift make it to the Super Bowl on February 11th to support her boyfriend, Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey? The Chiefs will face off against the San Francisco 49ers in Las Vegas at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is a cause of concern for Taylor Swift fans due to the global superstar having a performance in Tokyo the night before the big game. Swifties will be relieved to know that Taylor should theoretically be able to make it to the game on time. Is Swift show opens at 6 p.m. local time in Tokyo and runs its average of 3 hours and 15 minutes and flies out of Tokyo 30 minutes to an hour after the show, the singer will make it to Vegas between 4.30 and 6.30 p.m. Pacific time on February 10th, assuming she flies in her usual jet. As long as there are no unexpected complications, Taylor and Travis fans will get to see the budding romance tackle the Super Bowl. I'm really excited about this, the whole thing with Taylor and Travis and all of it. Are you a Swifty? You think you're really excited of about course. that? Of course. Since day one. <laughs> one thing I am thankful for is that there's not a budding romance in every sports category. But if there was, Titus Smith would tell us more about it. Is there anything going on this week, Titus? Let me tell you, Camry, there's a lot going on, just not romance. An Evangel's men's basketball team played an incredibly close game last night against Kansas Wesleyan. The greatest deficient of the game was only seven points at, the, at any given time. One of these times was Evangel's seven point deficit with only one minute and 30 seconds, seven seconds left in the game. However, a three pointer from Josh Prickett, a tip in from Jace Coffey, and a layup from G Garrett DeVault was with only five seconds left tied the game and brought it to overtime with a score of, se of 73 to 73. Evangel would win the game thanks to some crucial free throws, 89 to 85. Josh Prickett led the scoring with, uh, with his team with 26 points, followed by Garrett DeVault with 18 points and Jace Coffey with 15 points. On the flip side, the Evangel women's also played a very close game against Kansas Wesleyan. 
but it was a rough fight. Their kryptonite proved to be the three-point line. In fact, Evangel opened the fourth quarter with eight straight misses from the three-point line. Overall, they had a devastating 16% accuracy rate from the arch. They lost the game, but fought hard to make it 64 to 61 after narrowly missing their chance to tie. Cami Jenkins led her team with a 15-point game and nine rebounds. Meanwhile, Konar Patton was close behind her with 12 points. You can watch the Evangel basketball teams play their next game against York Panthers this Saturday at 1 and 3 p.m. Meanwhile, the Super Bowl is right around the corner with the NFL finishing its conference championships last Sunday. The Ravens, were, the Ravens were heavily favored to beat the Chiefs in the AFC championship, but the Chiefs didn't get the memo. The Chiefs ended up winning the game 17 to 10, meaning they are on their way to the Super Bowl. During the game, Travis Kelsey broke Jerry Rice's postseason reception record. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey also set the record for most postseason touchdowns by a duo. If the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, it will be the first time in 19 years that a team wins back to back. But let's now take a look at their potential competition. The Lions played against the 49ers in the NFC Championship. If the Lions secured the win, it would be the first time the Lions ever had been to the Super Bowl. So stakes were high. They had a 17 point lead over the 49ers at the half. However, the tides would change when Brandon Ayuk caught a 51 yard pass because it deflected off of his defender's face mask. Things would only get worse as the 49ers score 17 points in just eight minutes. The 49ers won the game 34 to 31. Their quarterback, Brock Purdy, was the last player picked in his draft. Nicknamed Mr. Irrelevant, he is now leading his team into the Super Bowl. You can watch the Super Bowl yourself Sunday on February 11th at 5.30 Central Standard Time. Cameron, back to you. Thanks, Titus. You know, I am not a big sports fan, so I don't know much about it, but I am excited that the Chiefs are going back to the Super Bowl, hopefully for that back-to-back -back win. Of course, and to see Travis and Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> when we get back, a country music star is taking to television to try acting again. And Aubrey is with us for one final look at the forecast. All this when we return. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seats for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. Best known for her role in the TV world as Reba in her sitcom titled Reba, Reba McIntyre could be back as a TV leading lady again soon. The country singer is set to star and executive produce a pilot for an untitled NBC Universal sitcom. In the show, McIntyre's character inherits her father's restaurant and discovers her new business partner is a half-sister she never knew about. 
McIntyre's last leading role was on an ABC's Malibu Country in 2013, which ran for one season. Currently, she's a coach on the singing competition show, The Voice. It's not yet known when the show is set to air its pilot episode. However, country music fans have been buzzing for details. I'm a big country music fan and a big Reba fan, so I'm very excited for the show. Yeah, I'm also a big Reba fan, but I haven't watched The Voice yet, so maybe I might have to skip out on the warm weather this weekend and watch The Voice. There you go. Aubrey, is there anything more you can tell us about the weather? I can certainly tell you more about the weather this week. We can see the lows are going to get lower throughout uh, these nights, but we can see these highs are in the mid 60s to high 50s and fluctuating as we get closer throughout the week um, to next weekend. So we can see a high of 65 today, so it is going to be nice today, but we can also see how it's going to lower throughout the week, so be prepared for it to get a little bit chillier as we progress through this winter. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. That's all for us today. I'm Austin Mickey. And I'm Cameron Lee. This has been Newswatch Today. For more on EU TV and for the latest Evangel news, go to euvalormedia.com.